and welcome back to Littles by Lyra. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so today I decided to make a keychain inspired by Revelation 3.20. It symbolizes Jesus' love and desire to be friends with us. Every time I unlock the door of my house or my car, I have a sweet reminder to always keep my heart open to him. Because your time is important to me. I'll add timestamps in the description just in case there's a specific section you'd like to jump to if you're pressed for time or need and or want a quick reference. So let's begin. So you see here I had black, white, and a couple shades of brown conditioned polymer clay. Start by rolling them out into thin snakes and place them side by side. Then roll them together into one big snake. Next, twist, cut, roll, twist, cut, roll. Keep repeating. We're gonna use the clay to simulate a wood grain. The key to making pretty wood tones is mixing and blending. The more you blend the colors, the more variegated and wood-like it appears. When you make a wood grain with clay, think about what kind of wood you want to imitate. I wanted walnut, so I used darker browns and black with just a little bit of white. To get a pine, you could remove the black and most of the darker browns and throw in some shades of yellow and maybe a tiny amount of pale green. Cherry and cedar wood would have red and orange tones. Birch and maple would be tans and sandy colors. So you may be wondering, why Revelation 3.20? Because in that very precious verse, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. To me, that is such a loving visual. Sitting down and sharing a meal together with my Savior as friends. It's just beautiful. When you've gotten the grain of wood the way you like it, roll it out and cut it to fit the desired size of your project. If it's not wide enough, place your pieces side by side, overlapping them slightly, and then roll it out flat. The size of my cutter is just shy of one and a half inches, so I'm cutting the clay to just over one and a half by one and a half inches. Today, I'm working with the clay on a parchment paper because this allows me to see the measurement grid lines on my crafting mat. This is great for cutting when I want to cut something without having to try 50 different measurements till I get the right one. The paper is easy to see through and lets me see the grid lines. Also, you can bake on it so I can take this and transfer it directly into the oven. In order to keep from stabbing myself with sharp edges from the key ring, I decided to trim off the corners to smooth it down a bit. And here's the close up. Just look at all that pretty wood grain. Next, I flattened a conditioned ball of red clay. I laid a piece of lace over the clay and used my roller to press the lace into it for texture. Then, I put a square of plastic wrap over the clay and used a plastic Dollar Tree cutter to cut out a heart shape. The reason I used the plastic wrap is because it helps round off the edges of the cut. This gives the piece a more polished finish with less work in the long run. Then, I checked to make sure that my dimensions still lined up. I used the back of a clay dedicated butter knife to press lines into the base to simulate boards. You don't have to use a butter knife, that's just what I had on hand. Just use something thin and smooth to make the indentations. I shaved off some black chalk pastel and brushed it into the grooves I just made, as well as around the edges to make everything look a little aged and rustic. Then, taking a baby wipe, I wiped away most of the pastel from the centers of the boards, leaving just the edges and the crease dark. Go light when you're applying the pastel. I cannot emphasize this enough. Later, you'll see that I had to super sand the back when I went overboard on, well, the boards. It's always easier to apply than to remove. Also, I added some brown pastel to the heart to age it a bit and bring out the lace texturing. Next, I rolled out some black clay and cut a small rectangle and rolled out a thin snake that I'll form into a loop. That'll be the door knocker. I used the ends of a Dollar Tree ball stylus to add a hammered texture to the door knocker just by stippling it across the surface. And then I used some bronze pigment powder to make it look like shiny metal and highlight the new texture. I made sure the hanger scale sized appropriately with the knocker and moved on to assembly. Using some translucent liquid Sculpey, I coated the back of the heart with a thin layer and placed it on the center of the base. 
The clay is still raw, but the pastels and pigment powders may cause a problem with the pieces adhering to each other. So, the TLS. Also, the liquid clay will provide added strength to the finished piece, so in my humble opinion, it's a good pra practice to get into. I used the liquid Sculpey on the back of the door knocker piece too. Then, using the ball stylus, I added some indents on the hanger to look like nail holes, and also on the heart. For the three indents on the heart, I rolled some small balls of black clay in a tiny amount of bronze pigment and affixed them to the heart with more liquid clay. Then, using the big end of the ball stylus, I made a hole at the top left center. This is where the jump ring will go to attach the key ring to the keychain. At this point, pre-bake for 10 minutes. Off camera, I made some more wood grain clay and cut it to the dimensions of the main piece. I used a toothbrush to make more texture and then used black chalk pastel to darken the edges. I also used it on a stamp to press Rev 320 into the clay. Then I used more black pastel to fill in the lettering. Unfortunately, I went way too heavy handed and when I tried to wipe the excess pastel off, it smeared and made everything way too dark. But never fear, there is a way to fix this. Once cooled, I coated the back of the pre-baked piece with more translucent liquid Sculpey and then placed the stamped piece on the back, making sure to press out any air bubbles but not distort the lettering. I trimmed up the edges and blended the joins along the sides to make it look like one solid piece. Then I made sure to extend the hole for the jump ring into the bottom of the keychain charm. This time, I baked for the full amount of time according to packaging instructions. As you can see, the back is really super dark, so once cooled, I took a small piece of sandpaper and a little water and sanded down the overly pigmented back of the keychain. The water will help the baked clay glide across the sandpaper, as well as capture most of the clay dust from sanding. It is recommended to wear a mask when sanding polymer clay. I took a bit of matte Mod Podge and gave a thin coat to the front of the keychain and allowed it to dry. When it was dry, I flipped it and painted over the words on the back with black acrylic paint. I used a baby wipe to remove the excess paint allowed it all to dry completely, and then coated the back of the keychain with a thin coat of Mod Podge. At this point, I realized I didn't have any jump rings large enough or strong enough, so I decided to make some. I happened to have some wire from a spiral bound notebook, and I cut about six inches off of it and made sure the wire was as smooth and bend free as I could get it. Then I wrapped the wire around the wide end of a chopstick about four or five times and removed it from the stick. Then, taking some nipper pliers, I cut up one side of all the wraps and got these four little jump rings. I opened each of the jump rings using a twisting apart, not pulling apart motion, and attached them to the charm, then each other, and then finally the key ring. And voila, the keychain is complete. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's keychain tutorial. If you did like what you saw, take a look around, watch some content, like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye!